An aftermarket head unit allows us to replace our vehicle's stock radio and achieve better sound, more tuning flexibility, and now with the release of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, we have more hands-free options and connectivity than ever. But how can we perform this upgrade in the Jeep Wrangler? Even if you don't have a Jeep Wrangler, what are the major steps and what are some tricks and techniques that we can use in order to install our new aftermarket radio? How can we select the right gear and how can we retain factory features like OEM Bluetooth and data. Well, as you can imagine, my friends, that is what's coming on up. Hey, what's going on? I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I do car audio reviews and lessons, and I do build logs, and I also do install videos just like this video. So if you are new here, I hope that you check out my library of videos and consider subscribing. Before we get started, I do want to mention that this is not a sponsored video. I purchased everything in this video. It's actually a Christmas gift for Mrs. Car Audio Fabrication. So we'll have to see what her reaction is once we get everything installed in a future update video. Without further ado, my friends, Let's get into it. To get started with this install for the Jeep, we're gonna need a number of different devices and I'm gonna go through each one. But just so you guys know, in any vehicle nowadays that you're installing into, you're gonna need these same different category of devices. I'll cover each category, let's go. First off, we're gonna need the, obviously the radio head unit itself. For this project, I've selected the Pioneer AVH-1330 NEX. Now guys, I gotta recommend that when you buy a head unit that you stick with a reputable manufacturer like Pioneer or Alpine or JVC or Kenwood, any of the big names that are commonly known, I definitely recommend that you stay away from any of the Chinese Android-based units. They just aren't good quality. Trust me on that. I know that you can get them for cheap, but in car audio, you get what you pay for. This particular head unit has HD radio, it's got Bluetooth functionality, Pandora, Spotify, it has Apple CarPlay, which is the main thing that I'm installing it for, and we of course have RCA outputs and all that. So here is the unit itself. And if we take a look at the back here, obviously these are all our different connection points that we're gonna need to make. We have our RCAs, we have our main harness for the radio. We'll get more into this in detail in a minute. Now, in order to actually mount the head unit into the vehicle, we're gonna need some sort of fit kit. So this is another category of item that you're gonna need no matter what you're actually installing. And for the Jeep, I've selected this Metra 95-6511 kit. And just so you guys know, all the different stuff that I'm using for this install is gonna be in a link down in the video description, easy for you guys to find. But what this is, is these are these plastic pieces. These will actually bolt to the radio and they are gonna hold it within the dash. What's also nice about this kit is since since you're buying something that's vehicle specific, usually they'll have multiple different model years in here and you can look up and for me, you can actually see, so here's the Jeep Wrangler, we can actually see how we take the dash apart. It shows the different bolts that we have to access, making our job a little bit easier. Now, since so many vehicles nowadays have data integrated into the stock head unit, we need to interface with that and we're gonna be using this little brain interface unit. With this device, we can actually connect a computer and we can program it with a particular firm firmware in order to tell it what vehicle it's going to be installed into and this allows us to retain things like steering wheel controls, the factory Uconnect in the Jeep's case, the Bluetooth hands-free, satellite radio, all these things and more. So with this device comes a couple different cables that I've left in here but the main connections we're going to need is we're going to need this data connection which will actually connect to our new radio from the Maestro. We're also going to need this audio cable which connects to the new head unit and then of course we need our USB cable. This allows us to actually program it from the computer. Now iDataLink actually has an awesome range of different vehicle T harnesses that you can get. So for the Jeep, I'm gonna be using this CH1 harness. If you needed to know what harness you need for your vehicle or if there's a harness available, you can look it up on their website. It's iDataLinkMaestro.com. So in this case, I'm using the CH1 and this is what this harness, I, I just took this off. This is what this harness actually looks like. So on this end of the harness, we have these four connections which actually connect to the Maestro itself. We have all these connections. These are what we're going to connect to the harness that comes with our new radio. We have these connections. These are what is actually gonna plug into the vehicle. And finally, so that we can get some of the different data and features, this plug right here, if you recognize that, that is what connects to the OBD2 port 
on the car. Now, depending on the vehicle, these are actually going to change based on the different harness that you get. So again, the same kind of idea is going to apply for different vehicles other than the Jeep, but this is what the Jeep harness looks like if you're curious. The final category is what I'm going to call add-on cables. And a simple one that you're pretty much gonna need for every single vehicle out there is a antenna adapter. This allows us to take the factory antenna on this end and we're going to be able to plug it in to our new aftermarket head unit. But there are some other cables that are sold separately in this category. And one of them as an example would connect to the Maestro so that you can retain your factory satellite radio. So we've went through all our gear, let's clear it out of the way here. And now we can move on to starting our install. Now the first step for any vehicle is flashing our Maestro unit. So this is a universal unit, so we have to tell it what to program to, what vehicle it's going to be installed into. So I've connected it via USB, and then we're going to go to the Maestro website, and we're going to click Flash Your Module. So once we're connected, we'll see this screen here. We can tell it what vehicle it is. This whole process, guys, it's really easy. They've done a good job of making it easy to follow. So the next step is it will ask you what the buttons look like on the steering wheel, and it has several different pictures, so you can just easily identify and make the choice. You then put in what exact radio you're going to be using. Using. You then tell it if you've got the CH1 harness, which I did, and you can move on to OEM systems. In this category, you can actually select what you want to retain and what you want to get rid of. So in my case, I am actually going to be getting rid of the Uconnect. I'm going to be using the aftermarket radio completely to control all of the phone functionality and that sort of thing. So we're deleting Uconnect in this case, and you can tell it what else you want to leave on and leave off depending on your vehicle, and you're going to hit next. Now what's really cool is it's actually going to give you pictures of what the steering wheel controls look like and when you hover your cursor over it it's going to show you what you're telling each one to do so if you did want to make a change to one of these different buttons you can simply click that particular button you can click the drop down menu and make a selection and what's cool is you can actually program different things for if you press and hold the button now i don't know if that's the case for every single vehicle but at least in the jeep that's something that you can do. So once you've made all your selections and changed up things the way you want them, you'll hit next again, and it will bring us to this final page. Now you can see that the unit is actually flashing right now. It's loading all the information into it. It's as easy as that. And in the meantime, now is a good time to print the wallet card. What that is, is it's a little card so that we can remember what we've programmed each of the buttons for on our steering wheel. Now finally, don't forget this part here. These are the two different manuals that we want to download. So this will tell us exactly what we need to do, what we need to connect. So once we open up our PDF, we're gonna follow each of the steps that it lists out here. I definitely recommend reading through this before you actually even start the install. And the reason I say that is in the case of the Jeep, there's something really important in here that if I'm actually deleting the factory Uconnect functionality, like if I won't be using that anymore, I have to make sure that before I start this process that I turn on the existing stock radio and delete all of the paired devices that are paired via Bluetooth. If I didn't do that, I could have some functionality issues where I can no longer use my phone to actually connect to the new radio. So it's that kind of thing that makes it so that you definitely want to read this, guys. Read this before you start the install. This is the page though that we're gonna to wanna to focus on the most. So this gives us all our different connections we need to make. Because we've got the T harness that's made by iDataLink, this is actually gonna be super simple. These are all just plug connections. These just plug in, these just plug in. Really the only connections that we need to make are these to the aftermarket radio. To connect the Maestro's harness to our new radio harness, we'll go through a procedure where we start with stripping the wire. We'll then apply a heat shrink tube. Next, we will twist the wires together and then we'll actually solder the wires together. Now this is a pretty easy process to follow, we'll just use the instructions and connect the wires based on their different wire colors. And if you guys want a little bit more detail about how to go through this process, I've linked a video up in the corner of the screen because this process is the same for virtually every single radio. So you can check out more detail there. I've got my harness completely made and there's a couple things I wanna point out for my particular installation. So these are all the speaker wires from the new head unit. I'm not actually gonna be connecting these to the harness and the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm gonna be using RCA outs 
on the new radio in order to send these to my aftermarket amplifiers. This is the system here in the Jeep, so I'm gonna be sending the audio signal into this audio control DSP via the RCAs. I'm no longer going to be using the speaker level connections. So there's no sense in connecting these cables for now. That way, if I wanna change out the radio later, it's just less connections that I'll have to unsolder. In the meantime, since I haven't connected them, I've covered them as well with heat shrink. Now, normally with a harness like this, I would completely cover it with this Tessa tape, but I'm not going to quite yet, just in case I need to do any testing or in case I need to do any troubleshooting if something doesn't seem quite right. All I'm going to do for now is just wrap this simple loose piece around here just to kind of keep things nice and tidy. So our harness is complete. Let's move on to mounting for our radio. So here's our new head unit. If we flip it on its side here, you can see all these holes. And the head unit itself came with all of these different mounting hardware fastener. So we'll take our piece and we'll make sure that we have the correct side and then we'll carefully line up the front here and then we'll be able to see which of the mounting holes we can use and then we can make all of our connections. So we've got our harness prepped, we've got the radio prepped, now it's time to come on over into the vehicle and start removing the dash. Before you get started with any install, always disconnect the negative battery terminal. Now again, this is gonna change from vehicle to vehicle, but I'm going to start on the Jeep with removing this little insert here for rolling down the windows, and that gives us access to this bolt that we can now take out. We will set this over here on our carpeted tray just to make sure none of our interior pieces get damaged. Next, we're going to lift the steering column up and we'll lock it in its up position. And then underneath here, we need to remove this panel. So the next two bolts that we need to undo is this one right here which is at the bottom of the right side of the cluster and then this one right here that is at the bottom of the left side of the cluster. We've got those out now we'll move up here above the radio and we're going to remove this. This is the random crap holding tray and underneath that you can see right there there's our final bolt we have to take out. I'm going to now carefully remove the dash bezel and the trick here is you want to slowly go around the outside perimeter and carefully pull. Now we have access inside the dash that was simple enough. I have to now take this radio out using these four bolts. With the radio out of the way you can see that we have this metal plate back inside here. I'm going to remove it by removing that bolt there and that one right there. The final thing we need to do in order to prep for the radio is see this part of the plastic up above? We actually need to trim this. Now don't just hack this off completely because this is some support for the dash. What we need to do is this is shaped like an L. We basically need to trim back to here and then go across and we'll use a tool to do so. Now you may notice I have this red tarp looking thing here and the reason for that is to catch all the shavings so that they'll fall down into this area where I can collect them. That way we don't have a bunch of shavings inside of our dash. I've got that trimmed nicely now so now we can do our little test fit here and we can see that the unit fits in perfectly. Now in the meantime, down here I've removed this panel, this has the climate controls in it, and then below it you'll find this box here. This is the Uconnect box. It's actually attached by two different bolts. I've unattached those, and it has two harnesses on it. The main harness here, which we'll plug back in, but I've actually unplugged the USB harness. That's what I'm going to be attaching my adapter cable to that will then attach to the head unit. This basically connects back into the center console here, inside there. It allows us to use that USB that that ex already exist in the vehicle. All right, so I've got all my wiring prepared here. You can see I've got the Maestro brain unit over on this side, but I've otherwise bundled everything up. I have all the RCA wires bundled up. I've got the USB and microphone wire bundled up, antenna wire, everything is nice and bundled and protected. There is one more thing I wanna do before I slide this into the dash. And that thing I wanna do is I wanna add this closed cell foam around some of the different pieces. I'm actually gonna wrap the closed cell foam around the brain unit here, and that will allow me to tuck it back in the dash a little bit better and not have to worry about this rattling 
against the plastic inside the dash. I'll also use strips of this closed cell foam to go around the major wire harness plugs so that those don't rattle either. I've added the closed cell insulation around all those plugs in there and around the unit itself so everything is now tucked away, not going to make any noise. So now all I need to do is connect all of these wires to the new head unit. I've put the radio in, I've reconnected the negative battery terminal, and now I'm just testing the head unit in order to make sure that everything's working good. Obviously we wanna make sure that we have power, which we do. Another good idea is to use the fader controls in order to test the front right speaker, to test the front left, rear left, rear right, and of course to test that you have subwoofer output as well. Finally, now is also a good time to test out all of your steering wheel controls, make sure that the volume up and volume down work and everything else works as planned. Everything seems to be working perfectly, so obviously now I need to reverse the process and reinstall all the rest of the panels using care not to hurt anything. So let's do that real quick and then we'll take a look. So here we have it guys, I've got everything buttoned up. I'm testing out the CarPlay right now. So far, so good, I really like it. It's nice that you can use the Maps functionality in order to have navigation on this head unit and it uses the navigation through your phone. You can also pull up your phone contacts, music, etc., etc. You can find out more details about CarPlay and how it works or Android Auto online. In an upcoming video, we'll do a little bit more of a review on the final install and we'll have to see what Mrs. Car Audio Fabrication's reaction is to the new radio. In the meantime, I do all sorts of other custom car audio videos. You can check out a few here on screen. And if you like what you see and you enjoyed these videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you'll be updated when I upload videos in the future. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, Truman, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon supporters team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping support the making of these videos. Thank you for watching.